Hello and welcome to this lesson on work done and power, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson we're going to look to understand and calculate the both work done and power. So if we are successful and we learn in today's lesson, we'll be able to define the work done and power in a system, calculate the work done in a closed system, and calculate the power in a closed system. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification, 3.4.1.7 Work, Energy and Power. So, energy is the ability to do something in the universe. So when energy transfers from one store in a system to another store in a system, work is done. So work done is the energy transferred in a system. So we can say that work done refers to the transfer of energy from a store to store without the explicit need for a wave. So we can clarify that work done is the energy transferred in a system. So whenever work is done, the total amount of energy um, before the transfer is always equal to the total amount of energy after the transfer. So we can say that the total amount of energy involved in an energy transfer is unchanged. So the energy cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, that the total energy before is equal to the total energy after, which is the principle of the conservation of energy. Now there are two factors that can affect the work done when moving an object. The first one is the size of the force. So the bigger the force, the greater the amount of work you can do. And the distance s you can push the car or the object. The further you push it, the greater amount of work to be done. So we can say that the bigger the force and the further it moves, the greater the amount of work done. So we can calculate the work done in a system with the following equation. We can say that the work done in joules is equal to the force in newtons times by the distance moved in the direction of the force in meters. So this allows us to define one joule in terms of this. So we can say that one joule is equal to one newton times by one meter. So one joule is equal to one newton meter. So by this definition, one joule is the energy needed to move one newton through a distance of one meter. So work is the energy that has been changed from one form or store to another. Now this does not have to be the total energy of the object. The value that we calculate with this equation calculates the change in the energy store, not the total energy store. So the equation assumes that the direction of the force is the same as the direction of the movement. And it also assumes that the size of the force is a fixed value, either it's a constant or we use an average force. Now when work is done against friction, this will cause heat energy to be transferred to the internal energy of the surroundings. So friction can act as a resultant force which can make the energy change stores in a process. So friction can cause some of the energy to be transferred to the thermal energy stores, which will cause the overall temperature of the object to increase, which is shown by rubbing your hands together to keep warm. So let's consider an example. In this following example, a box is pushed across a floor with a constant force of 100 newtons. What is the work done by the force to move the box 5 meters? So we know that work done is force times by distance, so it's 100 times by 5, so it equals to 500 joules. Now if the box is now dragged by a rope, which is raised at an angle of theta to the horizontal, this time the box is moving in a different direction to the direction of the applied force. So this means you've got to find the component of the force that acts in the direction of the movement. So you've got to resolve the force into the direction of motion. So when calculating the work done by a force acting at an angle, it's useful to break down the force into the components. So for example, the tension in the rope can be broken down into the horizontal and vertical components. Now the vertical component does no work in this situation because the box does not move in the vertical. Work is only done in the direction it moves in, the horizontal. So to calculate the work done by a force at an angle, its work done is equal to the force in the direction of movement times by the distance moved. So when we look at that, it's in the horizontal. So work done is force times by the distance times by the co uh, cosine of the angle, Fs cos theta. Now at A level, no work is ever considered in the vertical component. Only the horizontal component is considered. Now remember, no work is done when F and S are at right angles to each other. This is because if theta is equal to 90 degrees, which would happen if the force and the displacement were 90 degrees to each other, this value equals zero, so therefore the work done would be equal to zero. 
So let's have a look at the following question. A toy car is pulled along by a piece of string which is at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate the work done in pulling the toy if the tension in the string is 10 newtons and is pulled along at 5 metres. So we use our equation, work done is equal to force times by distance times by cos theta, so it's 10 times by 5 times by cos 30, it's 43 joules. So let's have a look at a few examples. So you can drop a stone weighing 5 newtons from the top of a 50 metre high cliff. What's the work done by the force of gravity? So we can say that the force of the stone F is equal to the pull of gravity, which is equal to the weight of the stone, which is 5 newtons downwards. The distance moved by the stone is 50 metres vertically downwards. Now because the force and the, and the displacement are in the same direction, there's no problem here. So work done is equal to force times by the displacement. So it's 5 times by 50, it's 250 joules. Now we look at another example, a stone weighing 5 newtons rolls down a 50 metre slope, what's the work done by the force of gravity where the force on the stone F is equal to the pull of gravity which is equal to the weight of the stone which is 5 newtons vertically downwards. Now the distance moved by the stone down the slope is 50 metres but the distance moved in the direction of the force, the vertical, is 30 metres so we've got to use 30. So the work done by the force of gravity is work done is equal to 5 times by 30 which is 150 joules. Now in the, next, in the next situation, a satellite orbits the Earth at a constant height and at a constant speed. The weight, of, the weight of the satellite at this height is 500 newtons. What is the work done by the force of gravity? So the force on the satellite is equal to the pull of gravity, which is the weight of the satellite, which is 500 newtons towards the centre of the Earth. But the distance moved by the satellite towards the centre of the Earth, the direction of the force, is zero. So the satellite is remaining at a constant distance from the Earth. It doesn't move in the direction of the resultant force. So the work done by the Earth's pull on the satellite is zero because whilst the force is 500 newtons, the displacement S is zero. So the work done is 500 times by zero, it is equal to zero joules. Now in any energy transfer process, the more energy transferred, the greater the power of the transfer process. The energy transferred, or the work done per second, is known as the power. And the power is the rate of transfer of energy, or the rate of work done. So the power in watts is equal to the work done in joules divided by the time taken in seconds. But it's also equal to the force exerted in newtons times by the velocity of the object in meters per second. So when a powered object moves at a constant velocity at a constant height, the resistive forces are equal and opposite to the motive forces, and therefore the work done by the energy is transferred into the internal energy of the surroundings. So we can also say from our equations that the work done per second is equal to the force times by the distance moved per second, which is therefore power is equal to force times by velocity. Now we can pop in our previous equation and say that whilst it's at an angle, power is equal to f cos theta times by velocity v. It also allows us to define what a watt is. So a watt is defined as the rate of energy transfer of one joule per second. And the equation of power is equal to force times by velocity can be used to determine the resistive forces needed for an object to achieve terminal velocity. Now as we know that a watt is defined as the rate of energy transfer of one joule per second, we can say 1 watt is equal to 1 joule per second, which is equal to 1 newton times by 1 meter per second. Now let's have a look at an example here. Consider the following uh, where we are using a crane, and the crane lifts a load of 1,500 kilograms, a height of 2 meters, at a steady rate in a time of 2 minutes. So what's the power of the crane? Well, the first step is to work out the energy transferred, which is in the potential because we're raising the object. So it's 1,500 times by the strength of gravity, 9.81, times by the change in height, which is 25 meters. So it's 367,875 joules. We can then say power is work done over time, so at that point it's 367,875 divided by 120, which is 3,066 watts. Another example would be that what's the resistive force on a cyclist who has a leg muscles of power 200 watts each and who reaches a top speed of 10 meters per second on a level road while cycling? So you would use the equation power is force times by velocity and therefore force is power divided by velocity. The power of the cyclist is 400 watts because each leg is providing a power of 200 watts. We divide that then by the velocity of 10 and we can work out that the resistive force that's acting on the cyclist is 40 newtons.
So to summarise what we've learned in today's lesson, we understand that energy transferred is equal to work done, which is the force times by the displacement times by the cosine of the angle. The rate of work done is equal to the rate of energy transfer, which is equal to power, which is the work done divided by time or force times by velocity. And we can use quantitative questions, which are set on variable forces. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define the work done and power in a system, calculate the work done in a closed system, System and calculate the power in a closed system. So thank you for watching this lesson on work done and power, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.